Lord be with you. Listening to rehearsal is often as worshipful as worship itself, I think. Uh, so we are thankful it is Thursday. Our theme of the I Am series this morning is I Am the Light of the World. And if you didn't grab it on the way in, there is a take home uh, devotion for you on the way out, right by the bathroom. We'll find out the stand. Take one for yourself, take one for your roommate, take one for your professor, take one for your students, if you feel so led. Uh, I'll begin with a word of prayer and then uh, uh, right to the Yubalate anthem. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for your word and for this day where the sun is shining so brightly to remind us of your presence and your promises that you are the light of the world. For this we give you thanks and praise, Lord, and ask that you use us to reflect your glory and your light, your peace, your grace, your mercy, until you come again. In Jesus' name we pray.
I don't know where I am. I am lost and confused. I cannot see. I am stumbling in the dark. I'm so burnt out. I am stuck in darkness. My candle has been snuffed out. I am succumbed by darkness. The I am statement today is I am the light of the world. Contrast with darkness, I uh, chose a evening worship a song to continue worship. We'll sing the song, it's in the hymnal. It is on page 245 in the hymnal, and it's part of the evening prayer. Obviously, when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, we walk in darkness. And light is an image used all through the scripture. We will touch on two of them in a moment, but as we prepare from a contrast, for a contrast from darkness to light, we'll sing the psalmody. This may be familiar for uh, some of you, may be unfamiliar for many of you. There's a chorus that runs through it. A Christian will play the, the introduction to the psalmody, and that's the chorus. If you can't follow the verses, you will not be able to sing us with it. Please join with the chorus. Let my prayer rise before you.
for this praise, Lord, this promise that you have given us, Lord, that you are the light of the world. We give you thanks. Help us, Lord Jesus, as individuals, as families, as Concordia, reflect your light and be your sons and daughters that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. We're going to review just those words briefly. Jesus first says, I am. Say it with me. I am. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you say I love you to your neighbor today. <laughs> Although I'm tempted. Jesus says, I am. And it's all over the Gospel of John. It starts from Moses as well in the Old Testament. Where Moses says, I'm not equipped to do this. Who should I say sent me? And God says, say I am sent you. And for me, that's powerful. Through these Lenten journey, we'll say, I am the vine, I am the gate, I am the shepherd, I am the light, I am the resurrection, I am the truth, the way, the life. Jesus says, I am. And for me, uh, that's Jesus declaring, God declaring the opposite of I am not, which is certainly uh, what much of our culture would say. Certainly much of what the modern world would say, and, and humanity throughout time has grown to believe. In the midst of that, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. On Ash Wednesday, we use this um, interesting church tradition of receiving ashes on our forehead, reminding us of our limitations and our sin but that God's baptismal sign is on us in the form of ashes. And the words that many churches, and we did here at Concordia uh, during chapel that day, the words we use are, remember that, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. That's, 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 not, a, that's not an honor <laughs> in, in uh, many and various ways. But what a contrast to what Jesus says. We, we confess by receiving those ashes and by participating that we are uh, but dust. We are dirt people. And we'll return there. It's our limitation, part of our sinful nature. In contrast to saying, you are, Jesus says, I am. And these promises are staggering. And they are transformation for Concordia and for the world. Jesus says, I am. I know what you are. This is who I am, and I've made a decision about you so that you don't stay dust, but you are crowned with eternal promises, and promised a place in eternity so that those ashes, which is my life and your life, are transitioned, and my name, sinner time, is changed to sanctity because of who Jesus is for me and for you. It starts with I am. The next word, I am, in, in the phrase, I am the light of the world. I am the my favorite part of speech. The, strictly speaking, a definite article. It is not an indefinite article, as in one of many. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. That's significant for me in our pluralistic culture and in our pluralistic hearts. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Light your world on fire because I love you. I am the light of the world. The next word in the phrase, I am the light. Again, we could uh, get at this by referring to the opposite. The opposite of I am the light is I am the or a number of other words you could, you could fill in there. Jesus says, I am the light. Jesus says, I'm not the future light, I'm not the past light, I'm not a potential light. And today I pray for a sunny day and look what we have. <laughs> I am the light. We can call that sunshine. I toyed with, the, with an old skit that I wrote a long time ago of, of somebody coming down and, and everybody throwing pillows and hymnals at them when they're blindfolded. And then in a pitch black room, you can picture that one candle that changes the whole complexion of the room. That's 
That's you. Jesus says, I am the light. And you're probably well aware, Jesus also says, because of God's grace, and because of what? God's love, and because of the Holy Spirit alive in each one of us, you are a reflection of the light. To be that candle in the midst of the darkness. John's Gospel says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning, and all things were made through Him. Without Him was not anything that was made. In Him was life and the light, and the light was the light of all people. And then this wonderful phrase, The light shines in the darkness. What an awesome promise of God. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome. Further on in the gospel, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, even though it feels good. God is with you. God has given you His grace, mercy, and peace to enable you to somehow, some way, some form or fashion, in a winsome way, to light that candle. It may not feel like it before or during the night. But God has called you to be that light presence in the midst of the darkness. Jesus says, I am the light, in the last phrase, the last three words, I am the light of the world. If you look this up, you Greek students, if you look this up in John's Gospel, you'll see that the word, the Greek word cosmos is used. It's a, it's a genitive. So it's of the world. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And we can talk about what that means. What is cosmos? But as a pastor, my privilege is to say to you that Jesus Christ is the light of my world, whether I acknowledge it or follow it. Jesus Christ is the light of your world, whether you acknowledge it or follow it. Jesus Christ is the light of Concordia's world, whether we acknowledge it or follow it. He is. Jesus Christ is the light of the whole thing. And there's nothing we can do about it. But God calls us to be a reflection of His grace, mercy, and peace. Jesus does not follow us. Jesus does not follow Concordia. Jesus does not follow culture or any direction we might choose. We do not dictate. But Jesus says, follow me. And I will make you fish for people. Part of making disciples and fishing for people in the midst of our chaotic and dysfunctional lives. I know your life is like mine. God has called us to come before His throne of grace, mercy, and peace, and be marked with the ashes of our limitations, to be reminded of these words, you are dust, and to remember that to dust we shall return me. But because of God's promise for you, because of God's mercy, grace, mercy, and peace for you, because of God's decision about you, Jesus says, I am the light of the world, and then calls you to give the greatest gift you can give in your lifetime. And that is to rise physically, spiritually, emotionally. And to do this very, very brave and important task of the church. To live forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ. To say, Jesus, I know that you are. And I know that you are the light of the world. And you've called me to confess my sin before you. Call me to know and trust in the communion of saints, in the forgiveness of sins, and then to go and give this great gift to your friends and family, to be loved as God has sent you to love and to live for Him, to live as a reflection of the light of the world. Because Jesus says to you this day, I am the light of the whole thing of the world. Let us pray. Pray. Please rise. Lord Jesus, you are King of creation, and you have said, I am the light of the world. Help us, Lord, to trust in your word, to trust in your promises, to trust that you are the light, and you've called us in the midst of a dark world to shine for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Through Jesus, I'm able to see all the beauty of the world. I am on the path that Jesus has laid before me. 
Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Jesus clears my path and helps me stay steady. John chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus shines his light through me to other people. Jesus put lights in my life, and therefore I am no longer succumbed to darkness. Seeing Christ's light shining in others rejuvenates me and gives me light and hope. Go in peace and serve the Lord.